Hello everyone, welcome to Assist Biology. In this video, we will discuss about birth control methods and medical termination of pregnancy. And this is the second part from the chapter Reproductive Health. I am Assist Kumar Das, a student of MSc Animal Biology, University of Hyderabad. So before starting, let us discuss what we will learn today. So first of all, we will learn what is birth control. Then we will see what are the various methods of birth control. We will see what are the pros and cons that is there are various method and each method is having some merits and some demerits. So we will discuss all these things and also we will see what is lactational amenorrhea and many more. So first of all birth control. So as the name suggests birth control means the process by which we can control births of new babies or child that is associated with to reduce the population explosion. So first of all that is uh, to control population explosion the first method that is a critical method is that the, the most central method most important method is that we have to control the population growth by preventing birth of new child that is if we can control the birth of new child the population can be maintained at par level okay so the most important step is preventing the birth of new children then another steps may come that is raising the marriageable group for that is for male 21 age the 21 year and for female 18 years so the prime importance should be goes to prevent the birth of new child and uh, how this can be done this can be done by motivating people for smaller families and how they can reduce the family size by using the contraceptive methods we will see what are the various contraceptive methods in this video in detail then another step is incentive given to couples with smaller family you might have heard green card is given to couples having only two children that that uh, means uh, earlier it was given by the government that is green card for the couples who are having only two children now government is encouraging couples to have only one children because two children also is leading to population explosion so one children is uh, means uh, some some kind you can say acceptable norms of the society so wh what are the that, that you can control the birth that is child birth or we can control the population by using contraceptive methods so we will see what are the ideal that is the qualities of an ideal contraceptive so here you can see in the diagram there are various contraceptive things that is contraceptive methods you can see the pill you can see the plastic iud you can see the shots that is injections you can see the implants you can see the patch you can see vaginal rings copper iud's and barrier methods so what are the qualities first of all it should be user friendly that is the user will not face any difficulty in using them it should be easily available that is it must be available in nearby medical stores or in vicinity only that is the user should not run here and there to procure the contraceptive that it must be effective that is whenever it is used it must show its that is its effectiveness or it must show its effect that means uh, that means it means that uh, it should not uh, show failure that is it should do its function accordingly then it should be reversible that is in can it can be used and again it can be removed that is it should not be irreversible like once done it is done for uh, um, that is all of the time this should not be like that then it should have no or least side effect that is the side effect should be very less or it should be nil if side effect are very nil it would be better then it should not interfere with the sexual drive or the sexual desire of the user that is it should not uh, means leads to reduction in the sexual desire or the sexual act of the user so these are the qualities of a good contraceptive you have to remember all these things and these are the various example of the contraceptive that is the peel the plastic iod etc so now come to methods of birth control there are various methods there are a number of methods of birth control and we have categorized them under suitable categories so what are the methods you can see there is natural method there is barrier method that is natural method means it doesn't use any that is your medicines or any equipment so it is natural method then barrier method means it prevent the contact of the sperm and the ovum intrauterine devices these are means inserted inside the uterus then oral contraceptive as the name suggests oral means they are ingested through mouth okay there are pills various tablets are available in the market 
देन कम इंजेक्टेबल्स एंड इम्प्लांट्स सो इंजेक्टेबल्स इज द नेम शूज दैट इज द इंजेक्शन दैट इज दैट आर गिवेन देन इम्प्लांट्स दे आर इम्प्लांटेड दैट इज दे आर मीन्स used under the skin we will see this in detail then surgical method that is the method of birth control by using surgery we will elaborately discuss all these things so first of all natural method so as the name suggest it is natural that it will not use as any medicines or any equipment that's why this is called as natural method so what are the natural methods you see that is periodic abstinence coitus interruptus that is also called as withdrawal method and that is lactational amenorrhea so there are three methods that is periodic abstinence coitus interruptus and the coitus interruptus is also called as withdrawal method and the lactational amenorrhea so first of all the coitus interruptus that is the male partner withdraws the penis from the vagina just before ejaculation that is when the coitus is going on the male partner withdraws the penis from the vagina just before the ejaculation and this prevent the entry of semen into the female reproductive tract that is the insemination is avoided and thus pregnancy and the fertilization is also avoided then come the another method this is periodic abstinence so before learning periodic abstinence we must have a look on that is the menstrual cycle here you can see the there are the there are 20 to 29 days here you can see in yellow they are shown they are the probability means they are probably infertile in this period then you can see from 12 to 16 days that is ovulation phase shown in red they are fertile period these are the fertile period and in fertile period you can see 17 to 28 days again so this is luteal phase this is the follicular phase and this is the ovulatory phase or you can see ovulation so here what happens the female is fertile or infertile depending upon the phase through which uh, she is going okay so in uh, follicular phase they are probably infertile in the luteal phase they are infertile for sure and in the ovulation phase they are fertile so in periodic abstinence the couples avoid coitus from the 10 to 17th day so here it is shown 12 to 16 so let us increase this range for 10 to 17 days so for 10 to 17 days what happens they avoid coitus that is the sexual intercourse they will avoid and this uh, why they are avoiding this because on this day that is from day 10 to that is the day 10 to day 17th the chances of fertilization are very high because ovulation occur in this phase so whenever sperm is uh, that is sperm is making entry to the female reproductive tract then what happens uh, fertilization is most probable that's why from 10th to 17th day they avoid the uh, that is coitus so how this is useful this is useful because the chances of fertilization is very high in this period so if you are avoiding coitus in this period then there is uh, no fertilization and no pregnancy so birth control can be done now come to lactational amenorrhea so first of all understand the term lactational amenorrhea so this refers to the fact that lactational means related to milk you can see so here you can see in the diagram during the breastfeeding the estrogen that is released from the ovary it suppress the release of GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus and when the level of GnRH is decreasing what happens LH and FSH that is luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone decreases the secretion of these two hormones LH and FSH that is popularly called as gonadotropin decreases from the anterior pituitary and whenever this hormone is decreasing what happens there are less chances of that is the fertilization okay so there is absence of menstruation during the period of intense lactation after parturition so after the parturition there is a less chances of menstruation where less chances because LH and FSH is decreasing so as LH and FSH are responsible for stimulating the gonads for the menstrual cycle as their level is decreasing you can see the arrow level is downward so as their level is decreasing what happens the menstruation is not there so the menstruation is absent here for maximum up to six months but as ovulation is not occurring in this period chances of contraception are almost nil that's why during the lactational amoria sexual intercourse will not lead to fertilization where because the edge lsh sorry lh and fsh level are low in the uh, that is the female so it will not lead to menstruation and as the ovulation is does not occurring in this period chances of contraception are almost nil so here we have discussed the three natural methods that is coitus interruptus lactational amenorrhea and periodic abstinence so the natural method are effective that is means it it will not use any medicines or equipments or any surgical method is not there so 
no medication is there so this is a merit of this point that is the merit point of the natural method but here the demerit is that the chances of failure are very high in this period that is the chances of failure are very high in the natural method so these are the two that is the the merit is that no medication is required but the demerit demerit is that the chances of failure is high here now come to the barrier method so barrier method is related on the principle that they prevent the contact between the both gamete that is the sperm and ovum so whenever uh, that is before fertilization they must make a contact and if you are preventing the contact then what happens there will be no fertilization so barriers are available that is for both male and female and they are popular under the name condom for male and femidom for female so barriers are available for both male and female so these are made up of rubber or latex sheet that is a type of rubber also latex and they cover the penis or vagina that is they will cover the external genitalia of male and female so by covering the external genitalia what is happening we are preventing the contact that is if the contact between the male gamete and female gamete is prevented then how they will fuse okay so they are preventing the contact then they are also effective against the sexually transmitted diseases so condoms provide protection against the sexually transmitted diseases and if these diseases are prevented that it is another plus point so one popular example of the condom for male is that Niroth so this is a popular brand now you can see here the diagram the diagram of condom is there cervical cap is there so diaphragm with spermicidal gel you can see this is the spermicidal cream and this is the cream and here you can see the sponge so what happens diaphragm cervical caps and what these are the barriers used by female always remember these are the barriers used by female and these are always reusable that is the diaphragm then cervical caps bots all of these are reusable and spermicidal creams are also used along with these barriers so what is the function of the spermicidal cream the spermicidal creams kill the sperm as the name suggests sperm refers to sperm and sidal means killing so the spermicidal creams that is uh, they will kill the sperm so diaphragm are used mostly with that is the all of these that is diaphragm cervical caps boards etc are used along with the spermicidal gel or spermicidal cream now come to intrauterine devices so as the name suggests intrauterine means they are ingested sorry they are uh, inserted inside the uterus so devices are introduced into the uterus and there are three types non-medicated iud's that is lipase loop so they physically prevent the contraception then copper releasing iud's like cut so you have to remember the names cu7 and multi-load 375 so here you can see copper releasing iud's that is multi-load cu375 there are various uh, that is your iud's you can see Myrena, Skyla, so these are they are popular under this name then fibro plant okay so here you can see one in another this endomethacin releasing Veracept etc. Veracept all of these are the names of the your intrauterine devices so non-medicated IUD is that is lipid loop copper releasing IUD CUT CU7 and multi-load 375 and hormone releasing IUD are progestasat and LNG20 so these are the names that is the for non-medicated that is without any medication you can see lipase loop they physically prevent the contact of the male and female gamete then copper releasing iud cut cu700 multi-load 375 and hormone releasing that is your progestasat and lng20 now how iud that is iud's prevent the contraception first of all they increases the phagocytosis of sperm with uterus so within the uterus so what happens when their sperm are phagocytosized that is the cell eating they will die the uterine cell will eat the sperm and the sperm will not be available to fertilize with the ovum then the copper ions suppress the sperm motility that is the copper ion are released from the copper releasing iud that is cut cu7 and it decreases the sperm motility and the fertilizing ability so the fertilization rate is decreased and there, there will be no fertilization and no pregnancy then they make the uterus unsuitable for implantation the uterus must prepare itself to receive the fertilized ovum that is it will be reached with blood vessel the wall will be thickened but if the uterus is unsuitable for the implantation then obviously there will be no 
implantation and no pregnancy then they makes the cervix hostile to sperm so the hostile that is a hostile environment of the cervix also retard the entry of sperm through it during the coitus or sexual intercourse now oral contraceptive so what are the oral contraceptive they are the hormonal preparation so oral contraceptive are the hormonal preparation that is they are prepared by using combination of hormone and they are popular under the name pills so here you can see there are a number of pills various tablets are there so these are pills so what are the combination you can see that is either progesterone or progesterone estrogen combination so either progesterone will be used or both progesterone and estrogen combination will be used and they alter or inhibit the ovulation and implantation so they alter or inhibit the process of the ovulation and implantation now what happens another function is they modify the quality of the cervical mucus so the cervical mucus must be favorable for sperm to swim in it and uh, thus it can better fuse with the ovum but if the quality of cervical mucus is being changed then how they can make the entry towards the female reproductive tract so the entry will be prevented or it will be retarded now you can see sahili is an oral contraceptive that is contain a non sterile preparation called a scent chromen so here i have put a diagram for sahili you can see this is scent chromen is the composition of the medicine that is sahili and this is a popular that is once a week pill and this is a popular pill that is sahili and it was developed by cdri lucknow that is central drug research institute you remember the name this is developed by cdri lucknow and how they are used so oral contraceptive are used that is for period of 21 days daily one tablet for a period of 21 days and starting within the first 5 days of the menstrual cycle so what happens when the female are taking these tablets as you know there are 28 day in the menstrual cycle so what happens so, so within the first 5 days one day they have to start the taking the tablets and they have to take it continuously for 21 days one tablet each day that is one tablet daily and the composition of the cell is scent chromen you can see here now come to injection and implants so here you can see this is a implants after injecting the implants or after keeping it in the body it is covered with a small that is patch like structure to prevent the contaminations or the that is from dust or something from the environment so what are injection and implants that are the also the progesterone estrogen combination either progesterone or both progesterone and estrogen combination and here as you have seen in the pill also the composition is same but here how they are used they are used as injections or implants under the skin so here you can see the implants under the skin and how it is covered with another medical patch then the mode of action is similar to the oral contraceptive that is although the composition is same here the progesterone and estrogen the that is the mode of action is similar here but they are effective for a longer period that is as compared to pills for example if you are taking pills or the women are taking pills so they will be orally ingested after they will be orally ingested they will show their metabolic effect and after that the that is the drug metabolic pathway will take place and they will be excreted out but the implants will show its uh, that is its effect for a longer period of time so the effective period is longer here as they are inserted in the skin now you can see another that is injection depo provera contraceptive injection so this is a example only i have put this to only show you this is a depo provera contraceptive injection now come to the surgical method so surgical method the, as from the name you can see so this is a method to prevent only pregnancy and this is a terminal method this is a last method so surgical methods block the transfer of gametes thus contraception so here you can see there are two surgical method this is vasectomy and this is tubectomy so vasectomy means a part of the vas difference that is connecting the testes uh, with the that is your urethra so the vas difference will be cord and tied so here you can see these are cord and tied and in case of tubectomy the fallopian tube is cord and tied so here as you know the fallopian tube and the vas difference are the accessory organs that help in the transfer of gametes so if they are cord and tied then how the gametes can move towards that is the where it will be fertilized so that's why the in vasectomy and tubectomy the fallopian tube is cord in case of the tubectomy and to cord and tied and the vas difference is cord and tied in case of the uh, tubectomy uh, vasectomy so here you can see the difference so vasectomy for the vas difference and tubectomy for the fallopian tube now the surgical method block the transfer of gamete as i have already told the vasectomy is the sterilization 
procedure in male so this is effective in male where what happens a small part of vas deferens is removed or tied up through a small incision in the scrotum so it is attached with the scrotum through a small incision and what happens the tubectomy that is uh, after the, that is cutting with the incision that is cutting in the small cutting in the scrotum they are that they are cut and removed then the tubectomy is sterilization process in female so vasectomy for male and tubectomy for female where a small part of the fallopian tube is removed or tied up through a small incision in the abdomen or through the vagina so a small part of the abdomen or vagina is cut and through which the small part of the your fallopian tube is cut and they are tied so here you can see the diagram to analyze it now you can see the medical termination of pregnancy so mtp mtp stand for medical termination of pregnancy so what is this this is a method where the pregnancy can be harmful for both mother and fetus so what happens the child that is the fertilized uh, that is the mature fertilized egg you can see the developing child or the fetus is uh, removed through surgery removed from the uterus through surgery so it has been legalized by the government in 1971 only with strict condition that is it should not be misused so strict condition to avoid its misuse and especially the illegal use that is this that is after sex determination some people are using it for the female fortisside so the illegal female fortisside and indiscriminate female fortisside should be prevented and after that mtp was legalized in 1971 and it is essential where the pregnancy can be harmful for either mother or either child or both and it is safe during the first trimester that is the first 3 month or up to 12 week of pregnancy the first trimester uh, it is safe because the placenta is not well developed so it is easier to cut the connection the, between the fetus and the that is the uterus and we can remove the baby or the fetus by surgery but after the first trimester the, during the second trimester it would be a riskier process because it is that, that is uh, it is more developed the fetus is more developed the placental connection are more well established that's why it should be prevented during the next pregnancy so if we are going for mtp that is the harmful for either that is the, if the fertilization is harmful pregnancy is harmful for mother or the child or both it should be done that is mtp should be done in the first trimester that is the first 3 month after the pregnancy or after the fertilization so this is the end of the video thank you for watching and if you are new to this channel Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for getting more updates. And if you have not seen the first part of the video, I will mention the link in the description box. Till then, take care. Bye bye.